Hey Mike, hope you're doing well. It's uh, still in lockdown here in Quebec. We have an 8 o'clock curfew actually. We've had it for the past month. Not great for night plans, but amazing for practicing. Yeah. So I've still been really, really deep into my jazz practice. This has been like my Bible. And uh, well, I guess the recordings have been just as important because just having sheet music and jazz doesn't really get you too far. But uh, having that has actually been really good for creating these mini like etudes to practice on my instrument, finding licks that I enjoy in, in various songs and taking them through other keys and trying to incorporate them into my playing. As well, uh, the reason I chose this tune, uh, Yardbird Suite, is because I randomly stumbled on a video that Reichman had done where he does a chord melody and then he takes a solo, a couple of solos, over the chorus to that. Or takes a couple of choruses and so, well, something like that. Anyway, uh, I transcribed through some of that and just learned the way he played it and then uh, You'll see that I do that, and I also, after that, do my own sort of improv going over the changes. I took to heart some of the stuff you said in the last jazz video I sent over, which was really focusing on chord tones. And so that's been a big way that I've been able to internalize the harmony and understand that over a C major 7, I should be thinking, okay, C, E, G, B, over an F7, F, A, C, E flat, and then linking them together through as little space as possible or voice leading. So uh, yeah, that's been a really good way of creating this scaffolding for my solos and my improvisation that keeps me living in the changes and has the audience still know what I'm doing without just noodling around. So uh, yeah, I'm curious what your thoughts would be on building out practice plans or practice routines. I find that I'll often just do some of the same stuff. Sometimes I'll get unproductive. I saw a really great guide by a guy named Simon Purcell where he goes over uh, a whole bunch of different things. He says it's good to cycle between a lot of tunes you're working on, to be spending time transcribing and listening. I know that you've said many times that there's things you don't get when you're not playing with people and I completely understand that. And there's really not much I can do at this point. So I think if I'm working on things like internalizing the harmony and memorizing tunes, it'll only get me those further steps ahead when we actually do open up to be able to play with other people. So uh, yeah, excited to hear that. And also, if you don't mind, maybe talk a little bit about what it was like doing a Charlie Parker tune. So uh, you did Scrapple for the Apple on your Into the Cauldron album with Seely, and uh, maybe walk me through your process on that as well. I think you mentioned a while back that one time you took the Omni book and you looked at every 2-5 that, that Charlie Parker did, or you looked at a couple of different licks and places and you try to incorporate them so uh, maybe speak to that a little bit and uh, how you would go about internalizing bop vocabulary apart from just listening to a lot of it so uh, excited to hear your suggestions and uh, I will be have more jazz videos coming in the near future I'm hoping to work through a bunch of, of his his most known pieces and really get them under my fingers and uh, to your suggestions in the past and everything uh, understanding the contrafacts where they came from has been a really big help too so uh, how high the moon is easier than ornithology the same way you can do uh, what's what's the other one I was thinking of uh, it was back home again in Indiana which is an easier harmonically version than say Donnelly. So uh, excited to hear your thoughts and uh, hope you're doing well. Take care and uh, we'll talk soon. See ya.